solving simultaneous equations with elimination. So in our previous video, we looked at solving simultaneous equations with substitution. Here we're going to look at another method um, that's called elimination, which involves eliminating one of the pronumerals. And to do this, we're going to either have to add or subtract two equations with each other. And we usually use this when we don't have any of the pronumerals as the subject. So let's have a look at these two equations, x minus 2y equals 1 and minus x plus 5y equals 2. So here we don't have any pronumerals that are the subject, so it's probably best to use the elimination method. And let's go ahead and label our equation, so this one being 1 and this one being 2. And with the elimination method, we need to look for pronumerals with the same coefficient. It doesn't matter about their sign though, just the value of the coefficient. And here, we've got both of the x's have a coefficient of 1. This one has a positive 1, this is minus 1, and that's what we're looking for. Because if this is the case, we'll either be able to add the equations together or subtract them from each other to eliminate one of the variables. In this case, if you just think about it, if you add these two together, x and minus x, you'll get zero and it will eliminate the variable. So once you know if you need to add or subtract, I like putting in signs in between all our terms, knowing that we're going to add them together. And we're going to say we're going to add equation 1 and 2 to eliminate x. So x plus minus x is going to be 0 and be eliminated, and that's the whole point. Then we're going to have minus 2y plus plus 5y. So it's just going to be minus 2y plus 5y, which is going to give us 3y. And then we can do 1 plus 2, which is 3. And here we've eliminated x, and we can solve for y now. So we can just divide both sides by 3. So y will equal 1. But now we need to go ahead and substitute it into any one of the equations to solve for x. It doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to sub it into 1 because it has smaller values. And then, so we don't know what x is, minus 2 times y, which we now know is 1, equals 1. So minus 2 times 1 gives us minus 2. Now we're going to add 2 to both sides. So x is going to be 3. And we just have our conclusion statement saying, therefore, x equals 3 and y equals 1. And again, if you graphed these two equations, they'd both be straight lines and they would intersect at the point 3, 1. Let's look at another example. 3x plus 2y equals 5 and 5x plus 2y equals 11. Call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. We're up, we want to solve for x and y. So we need to look for coefficients that are the same. These are not, but these are the same. So do we need to add or subtract these terms to eliminate them? Well, if we added them together, 2y plus 2y would be 4y, and it wouldn't eliminate, so that means we need to subtract them. So I like writing in minuses in between. And now you can either do equation 1 minus equation 2 or equation 2 minus equation 1. I usually look for the bigger values and I put that one first. And the bigger values are in equation 2. So I'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 1. So then we're going to do, because equation 2 is at the bottom, so we're doing 5x minus 3x, which is going to give us 2x. Then we're going to do 2y minus 2y, which is 0, and that's the whole point. And then we've got 11 minus 5, which is 6. And now we can easily solve for x here by dividing both sides by 2. So x is going to equal 3. We just need to go ahead and sub into any of the equations, usually the one with smaller values to make things easier. So let's sub it into 1. So we've got 3 times x. We know x is equal to 3 plus 2y equals 5, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2y equals 5, that's minus 9 from both sides, so 2y is going to equal minus 4, and we can divide both sides by 2, 
So y is going to equal minus 2. We have our conclusion statement saying therefore x equals 3 and y equals minus 2. So graphically, these two straight lines would intersect at 3 minus 2. Let's do one more example. Let's look at 5x plus 2y equals minus 7 and x plus 7y equals 25. So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So we're looking for coefficients that are the same, but we don't have any. We've got 5 and 1 and 2 and 7. And if this is the case, we need to multiply an entire equation by a constant so we get the same coefficient. If one of the coefficients is 1, we can multiply by the other coefficient to make it the same, but we need to multiply every term by that coefficient. So in this case, if we multiply all of equation 2 by 5, it's going to get coefficients that match up. So taking every term in equation 2, multiplying it by 5, is going to give us 5x plus 35y equals 125. And this is going to give us equation 3, which is the same as equation 2, it's just an equivalent equation. So now we want to deal with equations 3 and 1. So do we need to add those together or minus them from each other? Well, adding them together, the 5x and the 5x, we was 10x and it wouldn't eliminate the variable. So we know we need to subtract it. And I like subtracting the smaller one from the bigger one with the bigger values. So equation 3 has the bigger values. So we're going to go equation 3 minus equation 1. Let's put some negative signs in just to help us. So we've got 5x minus 5x, which is going to be 0. 35y minus 2y is going to be 33y. And then we've got 125 minus minus 7. And this is really important because it's 125 minus minus 7. So it's going to become 125 plus 7 because minus minus equals a plus. So we're going to get 132 when we do 125 plus 7. Now we can divide both sides by 33. And when we do that, we get y equals 4. Now we just go ahead and sub in that value into any one of the equations, 1, 2, or 3. Usually the one with the smaller values, I might sub it into 1. So we've got 5x plus 2 times y, which we know is 4, equals minus 7. Let's go over here. Then we've got 5x, 2 times 4 is 8, equals minus 7. Subtract 8 from both sides. So we've got 5x minus 7 minus 8 is minus 15. Divide both sides by 5. So x equals minus 3. So our conclusion statement, so therefore x equals minus 3 and y equals 4. And again, graphically, if we graph these two straight lines, they would intersect at minus 3 and 4.